This lecture is by Dr. Alok Kumar Gupta. This is going to be my third lecture on Plato, and this lecture relates to the problem which prompted Plato to become a philosopher. The problems which were existing in those days, Athens, which may have prompted Plato to become a political philosopher. So, as you can observe. the title of this lecture is plato's political philosophy or political theory so i will be highlighting what were the what what are different political theories of plato which uh, one should know or which is important for learners first what were the problems of the city states plato identified two major problems which were existing in those days greek city of city state of athens they were excessive individualism and a mature middle sumness which is evident from this slide and owing to these two above defects plato became adverse to the prevailing form of government that is democracy and he later on branded the existing form of democracy as rule of ignorance so uh, <clears throat> he writes in republic not one of them is a state but many states for any state however small is in fact divided into two one of the one the state of the poor the other of the rich and they are at war with one another so two things you can observe over here that because of the prevailing excessive individualism and amateur middle sumness which means amateurs were allowed to govern or who were becoming the rulers the amateurs were becoming the rulers not the professional professionally trained individuals who are trained professionally into the art of governance so <laughs> what the method was existing was that any tom dick and harry who wants to become ruler can put a uh, put his or her name in the fish bowl and the chit is picked up and uh, whose whosoever's name comes out becomes the ruler so by sheer chance of lot a person would have become a ruler whether he has capability to govern or not so this he he terms as amateur middle sumness and <clears throat> accordingly he says that owing to these two major problems the state is divided into number of city states and at least two are quite visible that one is the state of poor and the other is of the rich and rich and poor are at, are at war with each other and second thing that we observe over here is that what plato pointed out in republic out of that marx later on picks up this idea of class division in state or in society and he has uh, deliberated at length so Uh, these two things we observe in this slide then <clears throat> here in this slide i am explaining what he meant by excessive individualism actually those were the days when sophists who were the traveling teachers of wisdom in athens sparta and many of the greek city states they used to teach individuals that uh, they can what they should be interested in to promote their self interest and their self interest is more important than the interest of the whole collective or the state so one thing you should keep it in mind over here is that uh, what, which philosophy or which theories are branded as individualistic or individualism what, what, i mean what kind of ideology you derive from <clears throat> such theories actually individualism is a philosophy a theory an ideology where individuals are the end and state is the means whereas statism collectivism are theories where state is the end and individuals are the means so soft what sophists were teaching was or was what sophists were teaching amounted to individualism so excessive individualism is being explained here as the ruling class whichever was in power would always use its political power to advance its own economic interest rather than the interest of the society or the state or the city state as a whole 
the political offices had no sanctity between them they became rather the instruments to promote the financial interest of the ruling class so all political offices existed to promote the interest of the ruling class rather than the interest of the community as a whole this spirit of excessive individualism was the result of teaching of popular sophist think thinkers who were the main target of plato as i explained just few seconds ago that those were the days when sophists were widely prevalent all over the greek world and uh, the, the these these were the set of uh, traveling teachers of wisdom against whom most of the ideas of plato and socrates got conceived which means it is against the teaching or philosophy of uh, sophists that socrates and later plato developed most of their ideas they were the vehement critics of i mean both plato and socrates were the vehement critics of sophists and sophists had propounded that the state was a means to an end that is individual the state was only a chance conjuries of the individuals which means that individual is the end state is the means so state exists for providing all sorts of benefits to the individual not that the individual exists for perfecting the state so this is the meaning of um, uh, excessive individualism amateur meddlesomeness it means amateurs in a state of professionals were predominant in athens as i explained earlier that amateurs were governing were into the business of ruling rather than the trained professionals and the system of lottery were uh, existed for appointment to public offices and it was mainly responsible for this amateur the prevalence of amateur meddlesomeness and one can thus rule by the sheer chance of lot this is the practice which disturbed both the socrates and plato and uh, the latter that is plato has called the rule of athens as rule of ignorance which basically means rule of democracy or democracy as a form of government was based on rule of ignorance for socrates and later for plato so plato says in every state there were two separate states one of the rich and the other of the poor arnest barker has termed plato's excessive individualism as cause of social war and lasky says no theory of state is intelligible save in the context of its time so these prevailing conditions in those days athens shaped most of the ideas of plato and socrates or socrates and plato so what are the different political philosophy of plato that uh, one should read and I, as i told you earlier that uh, most of these political theories of plato or political philosophy of plato are derived from his masterpiece republic laws is the last dialogue of plato and that provides the sub ideal state of plato so the important theories are influence on plato which which i will be discussing in subsequent lectures that which all thinkers or ideas influenced plato shaped plato's thinking or philosophy or ideology then according to republic and laws then republic which gives the ideal state that we will discuss in some lectures laws sub ideal state of plato i will be discussing in another lecture then one lecture each will be devoted to theory of forms theory of knowledge the distinction between individual and the state prima facie theories of justice means the theories of justice which existed in those days athens and uh, socrates refuted each of the, those prima facie theories that existed in those days athens and then theory of justice and its feature as enunciated by plato then theory of education features of ideal state communism of property communism of wives rule of philosophy concept of philosopher king each of these again in different lectures i will be discussing so these are the major themes around which most of political ideas of uh, plato or socrates revolves 
who all influenced plato's ideas or shaped plato's ideas so plato bears the influence of these following people heraclitus of ephesus parmenides of elia zeno of elia not the zeno of citium who is the founder of stoicism and stoicism again i will be uh, devoting a lecture on it pythagoreans archytas of tarentum ecratus who was a comic poet so some of these people who were pythagoreans in their approach they also influenced plato's ideas to an extent and last and the most important socrates himself now the first one heraclitus according uh, sorry aristotle and diogenes agree that plato was influenced by either philosophy of heraclitus or with his followers this can be observed in plato's concept of sensible world as ceaselessly changing this is the idea which was propagated by heraclitus and uh, both aristotle and diogenes they have expressed their opinions in their writings that plato was influenced either by either philosophy of heraclitus or by his followers so this is how heraclitus created an influence on plato's ideas or shaped plato's thinking just keep in mind that this name heraclitus because uh, you may get a an mcq question where uh, who all among the following influenced the thinking of plato could be there so if the name heraclitus is there then you should learn you should know that heraclitus heraclitus did influence plato's ideas parmenides is another thinker of those days his theory of forms are plainly intended to satisfy the parmenidean advocacy for metaphysical unity and stability in knowledge knowable reality plato mixed together the arguments of heraclitus the pythagoreans and socrates sensibles from heraclitus intelligible forms from pythagoras and politics from socrates this is a submission which has been made by diogenes laertius and uh, uh parmenides he enunciated the theory of forms and uh, this was to satisfy the uh, his advocacy for metaphysical unity and stability in knowable reality uh, these are all little philosophical i am not going to detail or deliberate upon it here maybe if need be later on in some uh, other lecture i will try to explain these things right now what is important for the viewers for the listeners is that parmenides is another character which shaped in some manner in some way plato's thinking so after heraclitus parmenides is the name that you should keep in mind then pythagoreans visual in his fascination with mathematics we all know or uh, most of the listeners must have read about pythagorean theorem during their school days so pythagorean pythagoras was basically a mathematician and uh, plato was influenced by pythagoras it is evident from the statement which was written right at the entrance of his school known as academy dare not enter inside without the knowledge of geometry this was the a statement which was engraved on the right and at the uh, at the right, right at the entrance of the academy so this shows that the kind of or the scale of importance that plato accorded to mathematics then comes the socrates and no influence on plato was greater than that of socrates socrates i mean his persecution was also the reason for his hatred for athenian democracy like earlier we discussed that those two problems which existed in those days athens were uh, uh, mainly responsible for shaping aristotle's uh, sorry plato's thought but uh, another important 
development or phenomenon which may have made plato adverse to the political system of athens that is democracy was socrates prosecution because the rule of 30 tyrants which which enunciated for themselves that they have established democracy after the end of the peloponnesian war were responsible for captivity captivating socrates putting them behind bars putting him on trial and then executing him or uh, after prosecution socrates was made to drink hemlock and uh, that's how his life came comes to an end so plato held the prevailing system of democracy responsible for socrates prosecution so this was another event which must have shaped plato's ideas that democracy is the rule of ignorance so athenian democracy which had condemned socrates to death and socrates was considered to be the wisest man by plato the just and the best of all men that plato had ever known so his master his guru was uh, was prosecuted and uh, put to death by athenian prevailing athenian democracy so he become he became adverse to the or averse to the ideas of democracy or the rule of democracy this could be another reason that uh, he was quite critical of democracy as a form of government plato thus in his dialogues has tried to show the athenians that their action in putting socrates to death was unjustified and that socrates was right in what he was professing in my earlier lecture i have detailed which are the dialogues which are the four dialogues in which socrates imprisonment trial then uh, proposal by his friend crito to escape from the prison and then his final execution have been discussed or deliberated upon so all those four dialogues i have made a mention of uh, so kindly refer to my uh, lecture 2 where i have discussed the works of plato then two things are characteristics of socrates life a steady discharge of civic duty a steady refusal to go outside the bounds of civil law so what it means is that socrates was a wise man he was a great critic of the prevailing system of athenian democracy yet whatever be the law he was a he was a thoroughly law abiding citizen so a steady discharge of civic duty he took it as a responsible citizen and performed and he also refused to go outside the bounds of civil law which is evident from the dialogue crito where his friend wealthy friend made all arrangements for his escape still he refused that law abidingness is something that i have preached and taught most of my life and you are asking me he, he this is said to the to crito that you are asking me to escape from prison violate the laws i won't do that so he took he took full part in the civic affairs and fought as a soldier in more than one war when he was young and he also became a councillor and president of the assembly so his loyalty towards the laws of the state is best illustrated when he refused to he refused to escape from prison during his prosecution at a time when his wealthy friend crito had made every arrangement for his elopement and escape and secret transfer from athens to thessaly the method which socrates adopted in fulfilling his mission was the dialectic method which consisted in asking a person to define terms like justice and virtue and then by means of question and answers to bring out the inner ambiguities and inconsistencies of the position adopted by the opponent and ultimately convincing him of his ignorance uh now this you you can understand it like this that dialectical is a process of discovering knowledge 
learning about a phenomena like uh, here i have given the example of justice so justice virtue property rights duties anything any concept that you wish to know and reach at the ultimate reality about that concept then one may follow the process of dialectic but let me confess over here that a person cannot learn dialectic cannot have the feel of dialectics by merely reading the reading into the definition of dialectic so what is important is that if one wants to understand dialectical process how it operates then one should read book at least one book of republic where plato has refuted the theory of justice as proposed by cephalus his son polymarchus and then thrasymachus later in book chap book 2 uh, or chapter 2 of republic he has also refuted the dialogue of uh, ju- concept of justice of glaucon and adimantus but then the book 1 is such where dialectical process is quite intense so if one wants to understand comprehend in uh, how dialectical process really operates then one should go through book 1 of republic plato has both preserved the form and spirit of this method in his book which are in dialogue form and has borrowed three basic doctrines from socrates and these are the corner stones of his book republic so first one is socrates dictum that virtue is knowledge and uh, this from this he comes to the conclusion that if virtue is knowledge then knowledge could be imparted by the instrumentality of education so what it it means is that a man can can be made virtuous through the instrumentality of education second is his theory of reality <clears throat> which we will be discussing in subsequent lectures and third is his theory of knowledge he is so thoroughly influenced by socrates that it is very difficult to find out or is impossible to distinguish what is socratic from what is platonic one cannot make a distinction while going through the book republic or any of his dialogue you will come to this realization that in most of the socrates uh, in most of the dialogue socrates is the chief spokesman but then Uh, all ideas emanates from socrates mouth but nobody knows whether the, those ideas were really enunciated by socrates or is it that the di- the dialogues the ideas have been manipulated have been twisted according to the understanding of plato or according to the views of plato or according to the thinking of plato so what is platonic philosophy and what is socratic philosophy becomes very difficult to make a distinction between and things becomes more complex as plato speaks in his dialogues through socrates and later has become the mouthpiece of plato in his dialogues so line of demarcation between socrates and plato's ideas is very difficult to draw one cannot segregate that which of the ideas are socratic and which of the ideas are platonic because socrates has not written anything he only <coughs> conversed people used to locate him sat with him and then they would uh, ask socrates what is justice or things like that any they, they would raise any concept and then socrates would never answer socrates would in turn pose questions okay you tell me what is justice according to you and then he would go on refuting one after the other and in that process of conversation one would or the entire gathering would rather end up learning what is in reality that concept is so or what is the reality about that concept so the here virtue is knowledge the first one these two terms virtue and knowledge are identical there could be no virtue or excellence without knowledge so socrates definition of knowledge 
does not tally with general definition which means merely storing of facts so for socrates knowledge and morality are identical and uh, knowledge was also related with character and conduct so what basically means is that for socrates and later for plato being knowledgeable does not necessarily means that one should have tremendous amount of facts in his or her mind being knowledgeable means he is a man of morality a man of character and conduct so what it means is that the entire purpose of education is to impart knowledge which would make the man modest full of characters morality and good conduct this is what is the uh, purpose of knowledge which means the man is is made virtuous by the instrumentality of knowledge or education so this is what is the meaning of virtue is knowledge if knowledge fails to make man virtuous then it is immaterial how much of knowledge one is having so knowledge influence the entire personality through intellect though the latter was not the same thing as the former as i explained just now all qualities were inferior to knowledge that is justice courage temperance self control actually in those days athens four cardinal virtues were sacrosanct and uh, this is what was being referred to by most of the scholars in the order of justice sorry wisdom courage temperance and justice wisdom courage temperance and justice so wisdom was at the top and justice was at the end and uh, this is what is being said here that all qualities were inferior to knowledge which means which means wisdom was at the top and other qualities like justice courage temperance and self control used to follow after wisdom and this proposition that virtue is knowledge is the fundamental idea of republic and uh, it further implies that there is an objective good to be known through only logical investigation so now for socrates virtue was knowledge ignorance was the source of all vice so what it means is that a state should not leave any citizen into ignorance means not educated means not knowledgeable because that would mean that the person is not virtuous and is full of vices so this is what is the meaning of uh, virtue is knowledge because he says or he means to say if virtue is knowledge ignorance is vice so the political implications of socratic doctrine of the identity of virtue with knowledge are really far reaching socrates himself drew some of them and Plat- plato drew others so log- logically concluding from this proposition socrates maintained that only those who know should rule because uh, later on we will learn in a separate lecture on rule of philosophy that how he has advocated and why he has advocated rule of philosophy in place of rule of law in his ideal state on the basis of this plato built up his entire structure of rule of philosophy as i told you that i will be explaining it later in a separate lecture his ideal state and the philosopher king therefore it makes it evident that plato was greatly influenced by socrates proposition virtue is knowledge second is doctrine of reality which he borrowed from socrates and uh, socrates is considered to be the progenitor of all that is famous as idealism in philosophy or in political thought and this means reality inheres only in the ideas of things not the things themselves so what is real is the idea of thing not the thing itself and the idea of thing is the perfect permanent immutable self existent entity and uh, this idea of thing underlies the changing imperfect and outwardly objects of perception 
सो द आउटवर्डली थिंग्स आर मियरली द सुपरफिशियल अपियरेंस ऑफ थिंग्स सो वॉट इट मीन्स इज दैट ए द मेटेरियल एग्जिस्टेंस ऑफ टेबल इज नॉट द रियलिटी द आइडिया ऑफ टेबल इज रियलिटी सो दे आर नॉट रियल एंड परमानेंट बट ए फीमेरल एंड फिनोमेरल फिनोमेनल इन नेचर सो वट सॉक्रेटस मैंट बाई डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ रियलिटी इज दैट ब्यूटी कूड एग्जिस्ट विदाउट ए ब्यूटिफुल थिंग सो ब्यूटिफुल थिंग इज द आउटवर्ड मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ द आइडिया ऑफ ब्यूटी सो डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ रियलिटी बेसिकली मीन्स टू से दैट इट इज आइडिया विच इज रियल नॉट द concrete manifestation of that idea that is a mere perception so plato derives his ideas from socrates and has developed in its own way and uh, he thinks of an ideal state which is city in heavens so what it means is that he in the ideal state that he has built in his book republic or in his dialogue republic he himself says that it is it may be unrealizable by imperfect human beings which means the state that he is building into the realm of ideas may not be realizable on earth but then whatever states are existing the concrete manifestation of a state on the ground all these states can strive towards that state in the realm of ideas because the state that he has built in the realm of ideas is the perfect state so all other existing states which are imperfect may strive towards becoming the perfect or attaining those perfections which are underlying within the ideal state so still he says that his ideal state forms the fundamental reality though he says it is unrealizable so the the existing states were the imperfect manifestations of that perfect idea but the abstract ideal state could exist without any concrete expression so the ideal state could exist without any concrete manifestation of the ideal state okay then theory of knowledge is the third thing which was borrowed by plato from socrates and according to socrates there are two kinds of knowledge opinion belief or guesswork and real knowledge so opinion belief or guesswork is changeable it may change it may it is also shakeable from its very foundations which my opinion today may change tomorrow my belief today may change tomorrow in the light of certain experiences so he says that are, that, that these the first kind of knowledge that is opinion belief or guesswork is changeable and shakeable from its very foundations so apparently it is knowledge but really it is not whereas the real knowledge is permanent scientific mathematically true and based on reason so this real knowledge according to socrates should play a prominent role in individuals life which means he advocates he stands for he advo- he promotes real knowledge not the knowledge based on opinion belief or guesswork so an individual should accept the dictates of his reason and act accordingly he should not be swayed by the customs traditions habits opinions or beliefs this is what is his theory of knowledge though discussed very briefly it is just a brief mention of it otherwise the theory of knowledge which is the part of an, a branch of philosophy called epistemology it starts from pre socratic days to socratic and then later on it proceeds so plato derives this doctrine from socrates and applies it to his ideal state wherein the pure intellect prevails because what prevails over there is rule of philosophy which means rule by knowledgeable and knowledgeable here means men of wisdom that is why he says ideal state is a state where pure intellect prevails and it is the philosophers who are the embodiments of real knowledge and not the slaves of opinion and superstitions 
who have the commanding position in his ideal state. Other influences on Socrates. So right now we have discussed those three major influences or major theories or philosophies of Socrates which shaped the ideas of Plato. Other influences are uh, Socrates had great dislike for Athenian democracy which is one of the greatest paradoxes in history. So Socrates disliked Athenian democracy yet he was always a loyal citizen of Athens. So what he disliked most in Athens was the rule of ignorance. Because through the system of lottery, which was prevalent there at that time, anybody, any Tom, Dick and Harry could have, uh, I mean, become ruler or could have acquired rulership without any special qualification. So opposing this, Socrates taught the need of an expert knowledge based on principles for the conduct of political affairs, which means he built a case for rule of philosophy saying that only the wise men, those who are knowledgeable, which means those who are philosopher, should be allowed to rule or govern. So that is how he built the case for rule of philosopher rulers or philosopher king or philosopher kings. Thank you very much. See you in the next lecture. Bye.